Buenas tardes, Español 2. Hola, ¿qué pasa? Soy Patricio. ¿Dónde está la señorita Street? Esa mujer, te digo, nunca está aquí a tiempo. Pues, oh, ahí está su brazo. There's her arm. Okay. I guess you figured that was me. Hola, buenas tardes. Buena, buenos días. Porque son las 11 de la mañana para ustedes. Esta clase es Español 2. I want to say this in English really quickly. A couple of you uh, have accidentally watched the Spanish 1 videos. And some of the Spanish 1 kids have actually accidentally watched the Spanish 2 video. I think because you didn't look, you didn't click on the link that I give you because I only give you the link for Español 2. Uh, I think you just did like a YouTube search. So you might make it through a whole video and, and then realize at the end that that was the wrong video. So make sure this is Español 2 and make sure you always check the link. Uh, bueno, como estamos? How are we doing, you guys? Semana cuatro, right? This is the fourth week. Um, y, is that right? Well, we're halfway through the quarter for sure. Uh, progress reports are due, you guys, so I'm going to put a couple of office hours things in here right now so I know everybody's hearing them. Um, they're due basically tomorrow, but we have until Tuesday of next week to get them in, but please don't push things that far. I want you guys all to pass the class. You all should pass the class if you do the work. Um, I'm, I'm not going to count late points. I'm just not as long as you get them in in a regular, decent amount of time. So just get your work in, you guys. Um, if you watch your grade, as you always do, and if you're super overwhelmed and your grade is a B or a C, then maybe take some pressure off yourself and, I hate to say this, maybe do the work a little bit later so you don't so you don't freak out with stress, because I know a lot of us are feeling mucho estrés, including your teachers, but I know a lot of students are. So watch the grade um, and do the work. Try to do it on time if you can. Uh, office hours today, I was going to, wanted to say this really quickly too. I had intended to get those to you on WebEx. I was unable to do that this week. I've been way too busy. Uh, I know I've heard from a lot of you guys that are, you can barely keep up with your homework. So. I could barely keep up with mine because the grades are due. So office hours, WebEx, uh, are planned for next Thursday, el próximo jueves. I apologize for anybody that was looking forward to that. Some of you were, I sh I'm sure, and some of you weren't. <laughs> so I don't, I don't know, but not till next Thursday. Bueno, um, para empezar, hoy es el 7 de mayo, right? It's the 7th of May. Now, had we had class on the 4th of May, which we didn't, I could have said, everybody else was saying on that day. May the fourth be with you. <laughs> Good one, huh? May the fourth be with you. I know you've all heard that. And not only was it the fourth, but we have Frida Kahlo here looking sort of Star Trek-ish, más o menos. Um, now, if I'd been with you yesterday, no, the day before yesterday, anteayer, it would have been the 5th of May, el 5 de mayo, or el 5 de mayo. Bueno, hablamos del 5 de mayo por un momentito. Esta es parte de la clase de hoy, un poco de cultura. 5 de mayo, ¿qué pasa? ¿Por qué celebramos el 5 de mayo? Why do so many people, Mexicans, right, especially Mexicanos, why do they celebrate May 5th? Many of you know, we've talked briefly about it from time to time in class, uh, in my classes last year anyway, and we might have gone over it this year, but el 5 de mayo, escuchen. Now, I'm just going to give you a brief, really brief synopsis. Just be listening for the pretérito and the imperfecto. Remember the two past tenses that we learned this year that are really the most important thing, la cosa más importante de este año. So just listen for it. You could even write down the preter or the imperfect if you want, just to practice. You don't have to, but please really be thinking about what I'm saying. And like I said, it's a really brief synopsis. So básicamente, el 5 de mayo, en el año 1862, no, 1862, México tenía deudas. They had a lot of debts. Muchas deudas de pagar. Y los franceses, right, the French, querían su dinero. Porque México debía dinero, they owed money, a los franceses, to the French. Entonces, México no podía, remember that, the imperfect, no podía pagar. No tenían el dinero. Ay, 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 qué problema, ¿no? 
Uh, entonces, los franceses vinieron y el ejército, remember that word from unit 4.2, remember the army, el ejército francés, que era, que era, remember that tense too, que era muy, muy grande. El ejército francés tenía muchos hombres y el ejército fue, pues, grande, ¿no? El ejército mexicano, los mexicanos tenían mucho menos gente. Su ejército era muy pequeño. Pero lo que pasa, o lo que pasó, what actually happened, lo que pasó, es que en ese día, el 5 de mayo, cerca de Puebla, México, los mexicanos, el grupo pequeño de mexicanos, vencieron beat a los franceses. ¡Ja, ja! ¡Que viva México! Y muerte a las, los franceses. That doesn't sound very nice. Death to the French. I have a lot of French friends, so, including Madame Harvey, so hopefully you're not watching this. But back in the day, that was the spirit, right? Uh, México ganó esa batalla. That's another word from 4.2. So they won that particular battle. Pero después había otros problemas. Uh, we're not going to get into that. But that's why 5th of May is celebrated, el 5 de mayo. Maybe you guys did something for that. Um, La primera palabra del día. This I have talked with many students on the phone. I've had really wonderful conversations, sometimes kind of tough conversations, because a, a lot of people in, in my classes and, and I know in other classes, because um, I've heard from other teachers too, some, some of you guys are very stressed out. So I just want to remind you guys to hang in there. As we say in Spanish, animo. There's the word animo. And when you send me the word of the day, don't worry about the accent. You don't even have to say, I couldn't put the accent, just write animo without it. Animo, hang in there. It also means spirit, cheer up. Literally, animarse means to animate yourself. Animate yourself. Cheer up. And I don't, I don't mean it like, cheer up, it's all going to be fine. I mean, hopefully it will be fine, and I think it will be. I really do. But right now, it's just a tough time, right? So, um, animo. Hang in there, you guys. Si se puedo. You can do this. I can do this too, right? Si. Si puedo. Um, I'll give you the second word of the day in just a little bit. Um... ¿Qué más? Tengo dos chistes del día. I have two quick jokes of the day. They're both Spanish jokes, but they're in English, if that makes sense. It's just the, they're the best ones I could find today. So the first one is very corny. What happened to the Spanish captain that said yes too much? Hmm. Hmm, what happened to the Spanish captain that said yes too much? Well, you know what? He got seasick. Ah, got it. Good one. Straight. Okay. Bada bing. And the last one, you guys, and then we'll get on to some more important things. Although laughing is pretty darn important these days, and I'm sure you guys are cracking up. Porque a ustedes les encantan mis chistes. Right? Okay, the second one is, um, so I have to start it this way. Tense. Moody. Irregular? Ha! Huh. You must be a verb. <laughs> okay, this one's weird, right? So, let me do it one more time. Tense. Get it tense. Moody? Irregular? Yeah, you must be a verb. Okay, that's really corny. Soup, that's corny squared, right? Uh, and that's corny too, what I just said. But that is kind of, and I'm alluding to the previous verbs that we had, los verbos previos, right? And those were the ones like venir, querer, traer. Uh, there was one more and I'm drawing a blank. Remember those had an irregular stem. And those are, those are kind of hard because what makes them hard is we're not having time in class to practice. Uh, so make sure that you're doing the oral practices, that when I put them in, it says nothing to submit, but oral practices, please do them, whether you're doing them contigo mismo, with yourself, con una persona en Zoom, Zooming a friend and doing them, or with your parents, los padres, un hermano, please do them, you guys, because it does give you some help. It's really hard. I know it's hard to learn those, just memorize them and you know them, right, just like magico. Uh, or magia, in this case, magic. Um, so you do have to practice with them. But the nice thing about this week, lo bueno de esta semana, and I did this on purpose, you guys, no hay 
Esta semana es vocabulario. Bueno, y nosotros vamos a empezar 5.1. 5.1, ustedes van a leer en sus libros. 5.1 es uh, un, una unidad de España. Otra vez, otra vez estamos en España. So I'm going to talk with the, the Spanish pronunciation. Just drive you guys crazy because it is the unit on Spain. So estamos en España. 5.1, ¿no? Y el tema es a comer. That's your theme for 5.1. Uh, let's eat, a comer. Entonces, el vocabulario es vocabulario de comida y ingredientes de, co de comer, ¿no? Ingredientes para cocinar, cocinar, I gotta get used to this, cocinar, uh, etc. Esta vez, no les voy a dar el vocabulario aquí en el video con tarjetas. I'm not going to give you flashcards on the vocabulary this time. Ustedes van a leer el vocabulario muy importante en el libro. Ustedes necesitan, necesitan leer la presentación de vocabulario. You know those presentation vocabulary pages where normally you listen to the, the audio? You have, please read it. Read it twice. Leanlo dos veces so you hear yourself say the words and think about what the words would mean before you look them up in your vocab list. Um, unos ejemplos, unos cognados, some cognates from 5.1. Uh, think of getting the mindset of food and ingredients because that might help you. So think about comida. That's easy to do. I'm always thinking about comida. Um, so let's think about this one. Mayonesa. Mayonesa. Mostaza, mostaza, that's so trippy in, Sp in Castilian Spanish, mustard, vinagre, that was pretty obvious, right, vinegar, um, lechuga, lettuce, some of you guys know some of these words already from previous Spanish knowledge, las espinacas, ah, Popeye, right, Popeye the sailor man, doot, doot. las espinacas, um, la sal, Salt, la pimienta. Now that's not a cognate, but I took it right after salt because you'd probably figure out that it's pepper, la pimienta. Um, y hay muchas otras palabras que no son cognados. You'll get words that aren't cognates like las zanahorias for carrots, la cebolla for onion. Uh, y presten atención, pay, pay attention to the uh, Presentación, presentación de vocabulario, because you're going to talk about a lot about the, uh, in this unit, about the Spanish tortilla, la tortilla de patata, which is way different than a Mexican tortilla. So most of you know what it is because we've talked about it, but make sure you catch it in the book. So ustedes van a leer el vocabulario por sí mismo, por su propia cuenta. You're going to read the vocab on your own. Uh, ¿Qué más quiero decir? España, un poco de cultura. Pues ustedes saben que yo viví en España hace 10 años, ¿no? Y mi intención, I hope this works, es vivir en España otra vez este año con Viviana. Eso depende de los aviones. It depends on the planes. Remember the, the Union on Travel? Y los aeropuertos, the aer airports. Si abren, yo puedo ir. Si no abren, no puedo ir. Es un poco difícil este momento para mí. Para, para todos nosotros es difícil, pero en particular cuando una persona, no solo yo, pero una persona quiere viajar y no puede, ay, 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 qué problema más difícil. Bueno, es así, pero España es magnífico. Uh, voy a hablar un poco sobre la página de cultura, porque ustedes van a leer la página de cultura de España. Uh, hablan un poco sobre... Los churros y el chocolate. Bueno, los churros en España son divinos, ¿no? Y hay churreri, chur, this is a hard word to say, churrerías, right? There's churro places, places where you go to buy churros specifically, churrerías. Y normalmente se comen con chocolate. Y el chocolate 
caliente, red hot chocolate, es bastante espeso. Remember, it's quite thick. Y ustedes ponen, o nosotros, pon, ponemos los churros dentro del chocolate. We dip them in the chocolate. Y luego uh, los comemos. Son divinos. So, churros y chocolate, muy español. Mexicano también, pero originalmente de España. ¿Qué más? Van a hablar un poco sobre un artista famoso uh, que se llama El Greco. El Greco. Uh, interesantemente, El Greco, this famous artist called The Greek, nació en Grecia. He, was, he actually was born in Greece. Pero pasaba tanto tiempo en, en España que se considera, he's almost considered, un artista español, El Greco. Y tenía, si ustedes están interesados en el arte, uh, Miren información sobre él porque es muy interesante. Es muy interesante. Uh, ¿Qué más? Oh, la última cosa es, si ustedes recuerdan, aquí tengo este póster, ¿no? este cartel de Barcelona. Y hablamos un poco este año del arquitecto Antoni Gaudí. Es su nombre. You can't see it right here, it's too small, but his name was Antoni. Gaudí, I believe we watched a video this year, but it's hard to remember if it was last year or this year. Pero él era un arquitecto muy, muy famoso de España. Y ustedes van a leer sobre él. Tenía muchos edificios, many buildings que él uh, diseñó, that he designed. Y son súper interesantes, muy diferentes, muy únicos. Y si un día vas a Barcelona, Barcelona, ustedes casi seguro, almost for sure, van a ver edificios de Gaudí, uh, la Sagrada Familia, which again, sorry, that is la Sagrada Familia, that's the sacred, it's called the sacred family, it's the famous, famous cathedral, if I could talk in English, the famous, the famous cathedral in Barcelona, one of the top tourist attractions in the world, in el mundo. Uh, bueno, casi terminamos. I wanted to keep this short, you guys. So, menos de 20 minutos, just under 20 minutes. So, let me share with you the second word of the day, la segunda palabra del día. This also goes along with, you know, hang in there, ánimo. And I say this sometimes in my emails to some of you guys, and I want you to know what it means. So, it is cuídate, cuídate, which means take care of yourself. Cuídate con amor. You really got to take care of yourselves, you guys, and take care of each other, of course. Cuídate comes from the verb cuidarse. It is reflexive to care for oneself, right? So you hear, in fact, this is going to lead into the grammar for next week. Next week. Um, if I took the te off, cuidar is to care for yourself. Or, sorry, to care. Cuidar. Cuidar. So it's an AR verb. What I'm trying to get you to start thinking about is next week we talk about commands in Spanish and when you tell somebody to do something. And remember, and you, some of you learned a little bit of this in Spanish one last year, but many of you didn't because we didn't have time. But notice this is an AR verb, cuidar. And notice when I tell you to take care of yourself, you, tú, it's cuida, not cuidas. So what happens is basically when you're telling somebody to do something. And commands, again, this is leading into next week. It's not for this week. Commands are anytime you tell somebody, hey, open the door for me if you could, because I can't, I don't have enough hands. No tengo bastantes manos. Open the door. Uh, listen to me. Okay, so let me tell you what those would be. Abre la puerta. Abre. Remember, it's an IR verb. Uh, listen to me would be escúchame. Escúchame. It's an AR verb. Um, if I told you to write something on the board, I'd say, escribe algo en el pizarrón. Now, we have talked about these before. These were the two commands. What you're going to get to in this unit are the usted and ustedes commands, so they work a little bit differently. You're going to see a flop in the ending, a switch in the ending. I don't want to get too ahead of myself, so just start thinking about commands, how they were before with the two commands, when you're talking to somebody your same age and you're telling them to do something versus talking to more than one person. To tell them to do something. For example, when I say saquen las agendas, take out your planners, or uh, escuchen, please listen. This is talking to more than one person. So we'll, we'll get to that next week. 
Um, okay, más. I think I hit everything, you guys. Por favor, les voy a mandar el video, el enlace. I'm going to send you the link as well to the 5.1 vocab video for Avancemos. You remember those silly video videos? Definitely watch it. It'll really help you. Um, again, there's nothing to submit for that, but don't skimp on that because it's some. It's a little bit lighter and it incorporates the uh, vocabulario nuevo. Bueno, chicos, creo que es todo. Hora las hoy, las horas de oficina a las dos y media. Recuerden, please remember que hoy son de YouTube. Todavía estoy en YouTube. Y la próxima semana, next week, el plan es de estar en WebEx. Pero yo estoy aquí para ustedes otra vez. Tengo mi teléfono. Ustedes uh, van a tener mi teléfono, mi número de teléfono, porque lo voy a poner uh, en el mensaje al lado del enlace. So I'm going to put my phone. I want to make sure you got that. I'm going to put my phone number uh, next to the link today for this video that you're going to see here in just a few minutes. So please, if you're having trouble sending homework, that's the surefire way to, way to do it. Surefire way is to send it to me on my phone. I prefer it to be via loop mail, always loop mail. A few of you have tried doing it other ways and then it's too many places for me to look. So try to do it loop mail if you can, that's the best way. Uh, the phone is a backup only if, if the other ways aren't working for you. And always identify yourself if you send me un mensaje de texto. Bueno chicos. So if I were to tell you guys to take care of yourself, instead of saying cuídate, now I'm talking to more than one of you, cuídense, cuídense, mucho ánimo, los quiero, I love you guys, uh, mándenme un texto, escríbanme un correo electrónico, if you have any worries, any concerns, you guys please reach out because I can't help you if you don't do that. Uh, hasta pronto, I'll see you guys soon.